After last week's race at Mansfield, the PCC Cup Series heads to the Chicago Speedrome, which is located in downtown Chicago. This track was actually built during the off-season in an attempt to get a PCC Cup Series race here, and, well, it looks like they succeeded. This track is like nothing we've ever seen before on the PCC Cup Series calendar. It has eight turns, and the track actually wraps around on itself, so there's an oval inside of an oval. It's a really interesting looking facility, and it should provide some intense racing here today as the qualifier actually had a very close finish between Ramsey Cockner, Flint Stoneman, and Andrew Tamarzan with Stoneman pre- with uh, Stoneman prevailing in that. Now let's go to the race. Your pole sitter here at Chicago is Preston Bell in the number 75. This is his first pole of the season as he brings the field to the green flag. He won the pole by over a tenth of a second over Flint Stoneman on the outside. And we've got Ramsey Cockner behind him, giving him a good push into turns one and two. One and two here are interesting. It's got kind of a carousel format, but most cars don't go down there because there's not too much grip as Cockner gets side by side with Bell headed up into turn three and four, headed up the incline there as it looks like Cockner is making a look on the inside of Preston Bell. He nudges ahead of him just a little bit, head on the downward slope, but no, he's not able to get a run, and he will slot back into place, head on the final straight between turn six and seven here. And it looks like, uh, no, Stoneman's not going to make a run at him as they head onto the front straightaway here. This is one of the most unique tracks we run at at the PCC Cup Series. This track has everything. Eight turns. Di- different inclines, different length turns, different banked turns, you name it, this track has it, as we are proud to race here at this very unique track. Alex Tanker is in the 41 this week, as you see the interesting layout we've got here, as he heads up the incline into a uh, turn 3 and 4 that are over turn 7 and 8, first time we've ever seen that uh, track, but Alex Tanker has managed to do something that I didn't even think was possible, as he hits the wall there all by himself. He is slower than John Kirkpatrick, as he is running about 12 seconds a lap slower than the leaders at this point, as he's just kind of uh, putzing around here. Here's Claire Ossier, and she's running in 7th place right behind Barry Juveno and Andrew Tamarzan in this 11 car. She is your championship leader at the moment after she won at Mansfield last week. And, oh, it looks like we've got a warning from the officials for the 41 car driven by Alex Tanker to increase pace or get pulled off the track. This is the first time we've ever seen that kind of reaction from the officials to that 41 car and uh, well I'm not surprised I'm a bit surprised to see that uh, it's happened here but Alex Tanker pulls his car into the pits and I guess they're gonna take the officials warning and they're gonna try and make that car a bit faster maybe put on a better set of tires or uh, make the car a bit looser for Tanker there. Uh, Here is Daniel Sharp running the 0-2 car. He's currently running in 25th position at the moment here on lap 6 and he's been surprisingly well here and uh, I wasn't really expecting much out of the 0-2 car but he put solidly in the show. He finished 7th in the qualifier. Let's not forget he did finish in the top 10 at Talladega driving for RBM uh, surviving that last lap chaos there. And here we've got Scott Wallen, the driver who he replaced, running in the 36. He managed to bring a little bit of sponsorship to that team. And that team's kind of been hurting for sponsorship, and he managed to put this car in the show. He finished in 11th in the qualifier, and he's running back in 31st. This has not been one of his stronger runs as of late, but at least he got in the show, and at least he's showing why he's in this car, because he can actually uh, run with the big boys here. Oh, it looks like we got a bit of smoke up here. Preston Bell, he's the leader. He's running up on Alex Tanker. Oh, he gets held up by Tanker, and he's not going to take any of that. He puts Tanker into the wall. Caution one on lap seven as Flint Stoneman skates by on the inside. Looks like Stoneman will take the lead. Here, we're going to look and see what happened to Alex Tanker as he goes into the wall. He's stuck on the outside wall and right in the racing line, and a bunch of cars take evasive action there to the bottom, and He shoots across the pits, almost gets hit by Jacob Eichholz there as he pulls that car back into the pits. Looks like they're going to try and repair that car and get him back out faster. Restart would fly on lap 11 with Flint Stoneman in the lead. Ramsey Cockiner got by Preston Bell there for second place. Bell in third place. Andrew Tamarzan in fourth, but he gets freight trained by Ian Elias and Claire Ossier there on the inside. They make it three wide and get by him. And it looks like Ramsey Cockiner is making a look on the inside of Flint Stoneman for the lead. Headed up into turn four and turn five. 
he manages to clear him on the bottom with help from Preston Bell. But I think that Flintstone will be able to fight back as he fights back headed down the hill. And coming out of turn six, Cockner loses a bit of grip and Flintstoneman will retake the lead on the outside. But Cockner makes another look on the inside, but he, it's no use. I don't think he, oh, he pulls alongside Flintstoneman there, headed onto the front straightaway, but Stoneman leads that lap as he tries to get a run, headed into turn one on the bottom. He manages to pull alongside of him yet again. Great racing we have here, but Stoneman will be able to hold on as Cockner slides back in line. Here is Piotr Yahi driving in the 62 for the first time this season, and he's running in the top 15, doing battle with John Jefferson for 12th place at the moment. Yeah, he, the Lithuanian driver, this is his first ever start, and he is showing why they put him in this car, as he's getting, he is under assault from Ben Worthington at the moment. Uh, it looks like Worthington's going to squeeze by, but yeah, he doing a good job in his first ever start here with a team that's been uh, kind of floundering, except, well, they did win Talladega with Apollo, but that was kind of a fluke. Chris Benson's got trouble, but he's been running in the back all day. Benson dives onto pit road. It looks like he's got a puncture on that car. Tough break for him. Going back up towards the front, we've got Greg Maddox making a diving move on, on uh, Daniel Sharp and Barton Sandy there in turn one and two. He managed to use the carousel to his advantage as he pulled to the inside, and he's going to move up to 23rd position. This is a guy who we haven't seen much, but he is currently... He currently looks to be running for a Canadian team. He is a Canadian himself. He's running for a Canadian team in the World Sports Car Championship, and we'll see we'll see them at Miashkova Airport here in the next month or so when we're in Russia. And here is Claire Osir. She's running in fourth place right behind the leaders. She's been lurking all day up there in the top five, but hasn't been able to do much with it yet as she's currently trying to get a run there on, on Preston Bell and Ramsey Cockiner. Maybe she can make a run for the lead later on if she can uh, find some extra speed. And Andrew Tamarzan's another guy who's been running really well here today. We haven't seen much of him at all throughout the season. In fact, at Road Atlanta, his car was absolutely terrible. He was way off the pace. But now he's managed to get everything together, and he, he's looking to put together a pretty good season here. He's uh, been up north, near the front at the, at the speedways, and here's no exception. Oh, and on the outside, Flint Stoneman gets caught behind Alex Tanker as it looks like Ramsey Cockner will shoot into the lead with Preston Bell following him. Claire Ossier gets by as well as Ian Elias gets around Flint Stoneman there as Cockner takes the lead, but on the inside, Preston Bell looks to, be, looks to have the advantage on the inside. He tries to take the lead, headed there to the front straightaway, but Cockner leads the lap. However, he still has to hold off Preston Bell on the inside, which I don't know if he has the horsepower to do that in his star. Oh! No, he does not. Preston Bell sneaks back into lead. Claire Ossier tries to make a move, but Cockiner slides back in line. Alex Tanker, I have no idea how he's managed to do this, but oh, as he slaps the wall again, he has managed to be slower than John Kirkpatrick was. When Kirkpatrick tested at this track, he was about 9 or 10 seconds slower than the fastest time, but Tanker's running one-minute laps, and leaders are running uh, 47 to 48 second laps, so... I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss of words for the 41 this week. And here is here is Chester Benson, and he's running. He's having a good run. He's running in the top 10 right now. He's looking he's looking below Sam Brown for ninth, but I don't know if he's going to be able to make a move there. But Chester Benson having a good run. He is currently sitting in 30th place. Ramsey Cockiner in front of him is in 31st, trying to get back into the top 30 in owner points, but I think that both will be able to hang on to their positions as Chris Benson goes a lap down. He he makes life easy for Preston Bell, but it looks like he's yeah, he's going to chop off Cockiner there and try to make him lose his momentum. Same thing with Claire Ossier there. Now, that's one hell of a teammate if I've ever seen one. He, he lets by his teammate who's in the lead and gives hell for everyone else behind him, so... Uh, Good, good teamwork, I guess. One person who hasn't caught on to this track at all is Brian Gallagher, and he just got passed for 39th by Damon Jones. He has been struggling all day. I think there might actually be something wrong with this 12 car because his car has sounded down on power every time it's gone by the booth here, and uh, not really much to say aside from that Something's either wrong with that car or wrong with the driver. Uh, might be both. But here is 
John Jefferson having another good run, but I think this Meridian may have outlived itself because he is currently running in about 15th place and his car has sounded a kind of weak here compared to the other people who he's around, so this might just be driver talent keeping him up near the front of the field. Brian Gallagher, oh, there goes the car. He finally breaks down here on lap 31. Uh, car finally gives up the ghost after just putzing around for the past few laps, running way in the back. As he pulls his car down there to the apron, the leaders go by and caution will fly. La caution 2 on lap 31 because of Brian Gallagher being stalled on the racetrack. We had an incident on pit road under this yellow flag as Ramsey Cockner pulls out right in front of Claire Osir and Osir has nowhere to go but into his passenger side door. That does a bit of damage to the left front quarter panel of Osir's car there, the 11 car. As Preston Bell leads the field to the restart here on lap 34, 20 laps to go here. As Chris Benson starts on the tail end of the lead lap, Claire Osir makes a diving move on Ramsey Cockner for the third position as she moves into third, makes a move on the inside for on Stoneman for second place as she traps him behind Chris Benson there and Claire Osir with her damaged car moves up into second place. You can see the damage well right there as that quarter panel is pushed in the part of the tire is exposed even as now she tries to make a move on Preston Bell. She's trying to gain on him and uh, excellent driving for Claire Osir in that damaged race car. Pre uh, here is Daniel Sharp. He has moved up into 15th position through excellent pit calling by the motorsports team. They have done a great job all day running up in the top 15, but Preston Bell has just pulled away from Claire Osir just a couple laps after the restart. That damage does appear to have hindered her quite a bit. Either that or Preston Bell just has the most horsepower out of the top few cars there. As you get a good look at our beautiful facility as you just see that, that downward incline there. This track is world class, built right in downtown Chicago. And here is Greg Maddox through excellent pit work his team has moved him up into the top 10. He's currently running in 10th place. Cody Deke and Ben Worthington are running in 11th and 12th right behind him. But Greg Maddox has kind of been neglecting his PCC Cup uh, career. He's currently gearing up to run in the World Sports Car Championship, something that he did earlier in his career. But he definitely needs to put more time into this because he, if he keeps pulling off performances like this, we're going to miss him as here his teammate Cameron Taylor makes a move on the inside of Daniel Sharp for the 15th position as Sharp just kind of lets him go. He's going to fall back to 16th, but still an excellent run for the motorsports group. They have made an excellent choice in putting Daniel Sharp in this car, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him back in when we return to the Americas uh, in a few months here. We're going to go over to Europe for about an eight race stint. First race at Hungaro Ring is going to be very interesting. We're expecting quite a few pay drivers. Uh, we shouldn't call them pay drivers, but local drivers, we'll call them that. Local drivers in a couple cars. As here's Dan Lechleiter leading a cadre of cars behind him with uh, John Bracci and Barton Sandy. It looks like Brian Gallagher has gotten his car in working order as he is right in front of Lechleiter. And uh, he's running about as fast as Lechleiter, so looks like they've got those problems ironed out. Here's Ramsey Cockner running in third place, trying to make a move for second on Claire Osir as he pulls down to the inside in turn seven. He pulls alongside Osir coming out of turn eight here, coming out of the front straightaway, but Osir has a run on the outside and she noses just ahead of, of uh, Cockner there on the inside. Flint Stoneman running in th fourth place and Ian Elias makes a move on the bottom trying to get around him, but to no avail as Ramsey Cockner and Claire Osir head up side by side, heading up the incline into turn four and three and four. Coming out of turn four, Cockiner has the run on the inside, but the outside has a bit of an advantage head down the incline. As in turn five and turn six, there's not much grip on the inside, and Cockiner has to let off as Osir holds on to second position. But now, Cockiner is going to be under attack by Stoneman on the inside there. Cockiner. Holds off Stoneman, trying to hold off Stoneman on the inside, but Stoneman has drafting help from Ian Elias as now Stoneman pulls along on the inside as we've got great racing here. Great racing here back for 10th through 19th as we've got Maddox running on the outside. Here's Cody Deke and Ben Worthington making it three wide for 10th place coming out of turn four. And there's a bunch of cars in this gaggle as Cody Deke clears 
Greg Maddox coming into turn five and turn six, but there's not much room on the inside to get a good run, as it looks like Maddox is going to have a run coming out of turn six there. But back here, we've got we've got Daniel Sharp running in 16th. He's going to make a move on the inside of Cameron Taylor, but Dan Foray comes in and takes 16th away from Daniel Sharp. We've got great racing throughout the field with just five laps to go here, as I have no idea who's going to hold on to what position and for how long, as here's Flint Stoneman looking on the inside with five to go here, and he manages to get around Ramsey Cockner for third position as Cockner now falls back to fourth. This kind of seems reminiscent of the qualifier when Cockner was holding on to the lead for the majority of the race, and then his car just kind of gave up the ghost with just five or six laps to go as he started to fall back a bit. Here we've got an excellent shot of Stoneman trying to catch Osir there, but we've got Ian Elias looking on the inside of Cockner now as his car appears to be fading yet again, just like in the qualifier. The Cockner gets a good run on the outside, so he holds off Elias for a little bit there as you see all the cars on the outside of the track there headed up the incline as we head into turn seven and turn eight here running with uh, Flint Stoneman and the leaders as a bunch of the back markers file through the other turns. Here we've got Andrew Tamarzan looking on the inside of Barry Juvenile as he manages to get around him here with just a couple laps to go, just three laps to go at this point. But Tamarzan is having an excellent run of his own on the inside here and he manages to get around Barry Juvenile, who has been hungry for a championship ever since it got stolen away from him at the Cleveland Grand Prix by the officials because they decided to make it a double points race without much warning as, as Tamarzan makes a diving move on Alex Tanker there. Three laps to go, a couple cars into the pits. We've got Gaspar D'Souza and Cameron Taylor in from 12th and 16th place. Tough break for them as they pull into the pits. And now Stringfellow Vincent and Ben Worthington are reporting problems as they try to battle for 11th place. Head on to pit road. It looks like Worthington gets into Stringfellow Vincent a bit, trying to slow down. But the two of them come into the pits from 12th and 13th place. Tough break for both of them. As here, uh, on the inside, we've got Ian Elias making a move, finally making a move around Ramsey Cockner, taking fourth position away from him with just two laps to go as he heads down the incline into turn five and six. But nobody will be able to fight Preston Bell for the win, and he takes the win here at Chicago Speedrome in a dominating performance, leading 44 of 55 laps. Claire Ossier managed to hold off fierce threats from Flint Stoneman, Ian Elias, and Ramsey Cockner to finish second place. Stoneman gets an excellent finish for Tom Delgado racing there in third place, last spot on the podium. Ian Elias finishes fourth after getting around Ramsey Cockner, who finishes fifth. Great run for Andrew Tamarzan in that 53 car as he finishes sixth. Barry Juveno finishes seventh. Chester Benson, good run for him. He finishes in eighth place. Sam Brown has a very quiet run. Running in ninth place, Greg Maddox rounds out your top 10 after an excellent performance in one of his infrequent starts. I'd like to give out a shout to Daniel Sharp, who managed to finish in 12th place. Driving for the Motorsports Group, give that group a pat on the back and a round of applause as that is their best ever finish in the PCC Cup Series.